Hello and welcome to another booktube video with me Lauren from Lauren and the Books and welcome back to my albeit very very messy book corner. It's good to be back in the book corner, it's good to be back in the book corner and not have to do a video every day. God, blog was so stressful, sorry I didn't complete it guys but we had laptop problems then when we got the new laptop it wasn't compatible with things and blah 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 Hopefully, my old laptop's working now, and I'm having an absolute filming marathon today to get me back on schedule for all the wonderful pre-made plans I had for 2017. But today, I am bringing you, it's still Christmas here, we haven't got rid of all the Christmas. Tomorrow is New Year's Day. That is when I'm sorting out my book, my bookshelves, and I'm gonna have a lovely, lovely, clean, beautiful, beautifully presented corner here. I'm very excited about it. It's what I'm looking forward to most about tomorrow. Um, but today I'm bringing you what I got for Christmas this year in with regards to books and um, bookish things which sort of includes stationery and a few other bits as well. Um, so I'm going to show you what I've got here. So I will start. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll start here. This is that my lovely friend Emma bought me. This is a lovely little Wentworth wooden puzzle which is of a library. But, I mean, I love puzzles anyway. I did this on Christmas Day literally as soon as I opened it. Um, it has... It smells lovely because it's cut wood. Is cut wood what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, cut wood, but it smells like a bonfire or something. It's really nice. Um, but it's got really nice little cute little library bits in. So like, there's a piece here that's in the shape of a chair. There's a piece here that is in the shape of a book. Um, there's a piece here I think that's in the shape of a door handle. Um, just really, really cute and just a lovely little thoughtful present that I got. And I'm going to do that and probably get that on display up here. I'm putting it up there to remind myself. Um, the next thing I got was something that Davey bought me. So I asked David to get me a book this year that he hadn't heard me talk about. Um, and I wanted him to go into a, a bookshop and find a book himself that he thought I would like. He picked up this, which is Love From Boy. Um, and it's Roald Dahl's Letters to His Mother. Now I do very much enjoy Roald Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl was a big, big um, part of my childhood growing up. I've read and loved the majority of his books. I'm trying to remember one that I haven't read. There is one of his that I haven't read. Um, so this was very, very cute of David to do this. And also it's got like, it's got um, photos in here throughout um, and like the actual scanning, scanned photos of the postcards and letters that he sent his mother um, and then the typography of it as well. It's just, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be really nice. I think it's gonna be something I sort of like dip in and out of. Um, I don't think it'll be one that I'd sit and read cover to cover, but I think it'll be lovely. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to reading it. So thank you, David, very good idea. David's mother bought me, I collect the Penguin Cloth Fountain Classics, they live here. Um, I've got one out on loan at the moment. I think somebody's got Frankenstein. Um, and I keep them there. I've also got Pride and Prejudice over there, which is what I'm going to be reading in January. Um, this is Far From The Madden Crowd. This is probably one of my favorite front covers I've seen. I haven't read Far From The Madden Crowd before. Um, when I studied A-level, the other group did this, and I don't really remember hearing many good things about it, but I have wanted to read it. Um, I think they did a BBC adaptation of it, or maybe a film adaptation of it recently as well, um, which I must must get around to watching. But it's um, this lovely like brown color with, yellow bees on it and it's just beautiful and the end papers are yellow too and I am looking forward to getting around to reading that. She also got me Maggie O'Farrell, This Must Be The Place. Um, I haven't read any Maggie O'Farrell but I'm here, they're very, I've heard they're very easy reads and I do like these like floppy big paperbacks um, so I am looking forward to reading it. I just saw something in it that looked quite exciting. Photos. So this is about Meet Daniel Sullivan, a man with a complicated life, a New Yorker living in the wilds of Ireland, love books set in Ireland. He has children he never sees in California, a father he loathes in Brooklyn, and a wife, Claudette, who is a reclusive ex-film star given to shooting at anyone who ventures up their driveway. He is also about to find out something about a woman he lost touch with 20 years ago, and this discovery will send him off course, far away from wife and home. Will his love for Claudette be enough to bring him back? So yeah, I love books set in Ireland, so that sounds right up my alley. Now, I'll try and do the number, I've got a number of cookbooks, I'll try and do them all together. Let's do this. I'll try and do all the cookbooks together. So, first of all, I'll start with, oh, they're not. Um, I will start with this mocktail manual that David's sister got me. Um, I don't drink booze, um, and quite often at Christmas, I don't miss not drinking booze, but the only time I do feel a bit like, mm, I wish I did drink booze, was at Christmas when there's all lovely cocktails and delightful things going round and I'm like oh I'll just have a apple juice don't worry about me so 
I'd seen this in anthropology um, and David's sister was kind enough to get it for me. I've looked through it. It's not just mocktails. It's got smoothies. It's got teas. It's got um, flavoured waters. It's got just a, a bit of bloody everything you can imagine. And there's just so... Tea, smoothies, mocktails, juices, fruity waters, punchy shakes, seasonal energizers and hot drinks. It's just got all of it. I don't think I've made any of these yet, but I did buy the stuff to make a seasonal one. I might make a water. Coconut, watermelon and lime punch, for instance. And it's re really laid out lovely, so it's got a picture of what the drink will look like, what you need, how to make it, what... It's just very nicely laid out. Blackberry, apple and mint. Oh, lovely. Green turbo. They're the mocktails. Let's have a look at some of the teas because that's what we really like, isn't it? Ginger, lemon and honey tea. Ginger, lime and honey tea. I'm going to make that now. I've got all that stuff and I don't even... I'm going to make that now. I'm going to make it now. David won't eat it. Spearmint tea. Just very, very nice, good book. Um, I've also got Anna Jones, A Modern Way to Cook. Um, I am becoming a vegetarian in 2017. I will be eating fish, baby steps. Um, so, I, um, and this book um, is a wonderful vegetarian place to start, I believe. I saw, I watched um, Rosianna's um, video of her cooking from this for a month, and I found that that's an amazing video. I'll link that down below. Um, and just the thing she was cooking, I was so impressed with, and I, I put this on my Christmas list, and it's just got some really good um, vegetarian food in here. Already, look, sticky green bean and chilli paneer. I love paneer. Curry leaf and smoky celeriac pilaf. Buddha bowls. What's this? A modern moussaka. So these are all things as well, because David just not becoming a vegetarian that I can sort of like make for myself and then amp up the meat for him. Um, so yeah, very much looking forward to looking into that. I've also got, I had my eye on this book for a long, long time. My cousin Laura and her husband Tom um, own this book. In fact, I think I might even have bought it for him. <laughs> it's called Salad Love. I, bought, I saw it in Anthropology and it is just a series of salads throughout the year, set in seasons, which I really enjoy cookbooks that are set in seasons because it's very good for what you can get seasonally and also it sort of reflects the mood you're in when you're eating. Um, and it's just every single page is different, two different salads and it gives you, so this for instance is a pescatarian um, salad of roasted salmon, spelt, courgette and red pepper hello but it also gives you a vegan alternative so replace the salmon with 100 grams of chick chickpeas or cannellini beans so as i said earlier david has not become a vegetarian so i was like this so this one omnivore couscous roasted chicken and vegetables he can have that however the vegan alternative is replace the chicken with 100 grams of tin black beans or black lentils we're both happy um and also i love eating salads and i don't do it enough in other times of the year that aren't summer. So I thought this would be very helpful. They also do a breakfast love book of this. I just think it's laid out beautifully, very accessible, very easy. Um, and I'm looking forward to cooking lots of things from it. Though that very cousin Laura that I was talking about and her husband Tom bought me this. This is a book that I had my eye on um, for a while as well. It's called The Flavour Thesaurus. It is amazing. I need to get reading this. Um, apart from it being an absolutely beautifully like published book. Look at it, it's just gorgeous. Pink pages. Um, it is a book about flavours, so there's no actual recipes in here, which is something that um, I'm really like pleased about, and it just has different chapters about particular ingredients and then what they go with, which is what I've wanted to do. I'm quite, I'm, I'm can follow a recipe wonderfully. I find myself very impressed with how I, how well I can follow a recipe, and people always say to me, "Oh, your cook is lovely." That's just me following a recipe. I want to start making up my own stuff. So for instance, it's got here a chapter on cauliflower and it has every, like in alphabetical order, all the things that cauliflower go with. Cauliflower and almond, cauliflower and anchovy, broccoli, caper, caviar, chili, chocolate. Chocolate? When Heston Blumenthal wanted to show cauliflower how much he loved it, he, be, he came bearing chocolate. The result was a cauliflower risotto with a carpaccio of cauliflower and chocolate jelly. Hmm. Um, yeah, so it just gives you ideas of things that go together. So very excited about that. Looking forward to reading my way through that and then trying things out as I go. Um, I've also got this cookbook. David bought me this. Um, Nadia um, bought, got Bake Me a Story. So Nadia Hussain won the Great British Bake Off in the UK last year. Um, and she, um, I love her. I can barely even watch a TV programme without crying with her on. That's how much I love her. Um, she wrote this um, storybook that has... Um, I, uh, has recipes at the end of it and um, so it's a children's storybook but it's very very sweet so for instance after the story of Hansel and Gretel she's got a recipe for cookie mallows um, and you can make them with your children and things like that it's really nicely done it's like it's all illustrated with photos in so Nadia's in there her children are in there um, and it's just a lovely lovely book and I will be making some things out of here and I probably will be reading some stories out of here too um, 
Oh dear, I've also got this book. The last cookbook is Toast Hash Roche Mash. So this is um, done, This is uh, written by Dan Doherty, who owns the restaurant, I believe it's called The Duck and Waffle, where there's a lot of Toast Hash Roche Mash sold. Um, so I saw him on Saturday Kitchen and was like, my God, he looks like he cooks this sort of stuff. Basically, everything he cooks has an egg on top. <laughs> it's a stuff with an egg on top. Um, so there's lots of things here. And also, when I got it, I, I asked for it before I decided to become a vegetarian next year. And I was like, oh, I wonder if it's going to be a bit too meaty because it's about hashes and roasts and things like that. Not at all. There's so much in here. So for instance, this is fish but sticky cornbread with grilled prawns and tomato salsa and um, that's the first thing I've opened it onto she says that she opens it onto three different um roasted root vegetables creamed onions garlic and crispy parsnips rhubarb and ricotta tart oh, I'm supposed to be making a dessert for tonight oh I haven't thought about that maybe I'll make that although rhubarb's not in season is it um it's just a really nicely presented book and lots of like eggs on top very nice indeed smoked salmon cream cheese scotch eggs yum so that's that. So that's all the that's all the cookbooks in terms of these. Oh, I've just realised I've, I've forgotten a book. David, yeah. would you please bring me in the book on the bed called Through Black Spruce? Yeah, I'll go. Thank you. Um, Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings. She's a wonderful human being who bought me three books amongst other little gifts. Um, David is in transit bringing me one now. Um, the first one is White Oleander by Janet Fitch. Um, this was... He hasn't got any top on! First one is um, White Oleander by Janet Fitch. Um, this is a, it was picked for Oprah Winfrey's book club. It's a passionate, hypnotic and dangerous novel about a daughter and her mother. Astrid has been raised by her mother Ingrid, a beautiful, headstrong poet. Astrid's world revolves around Ingrid. She forgives her everything until Ingrid commits a crime of passion. I remember Mercedes reviewing this on her channel and I was very excited about it. This is one Mercedes hasn't read yet, but she says she's very excited about and in turn I am. Um, it's called The Past by Tessa Hadley. It's set in like, it sounds like a perfect book to read in summer. Four siblings meet up at their grandparents' old house for three long, hot summer weeks, but under the idyllic surface lies simmering tensions. Roland has come with his new wife and his sisters don't like her. Fran has brought her children, who soon uncover an ugly secret in a ruined cottage in the woods. Alice has invited Kasim, an outsider who makes plans to seduce Roland's teenage daughter, and Harriet, the eldest, finds her quiet self-possession ripped apart when passion erupts unexpectedly. Over the course of the holiday, a familiar way of life falls apart forever. I think it sounds wonderful. And then lastly, she bought me Through Back Spruce by Joseph Boyden, which is a book that I am this far through. I started reading it on Christmas Day um, and I've less than 100 pages to the end now and I've been absolutely loving it. It's about um, a, so it's, it's about the, I believe the indigenous people of Canada. Um, one of the, it's about a man who is in a coma um, and you follow his sort of um, story of, of how he come to be in this coma and um, the actions he's taken. And then you also follow his niece who, is visiting him while he's in his coma, telling her story, telling him the story of what happened when she went to look for her sister, his other niece, um, and they live in like a model lifestyle. And this chap who's in the coma was a um, a, a hunter and would go out and hunt the oh, David fallen over um, would hunt animals and things in in Canada. Um, so such different perspectives, but oh, I've just it's a, such a readable book. I've really really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm hoping to get it finished today, but very much enjoyed that. So well done, well done so far. Um, and then the rest aren't actual books, they're sort of stationary and bits like that. So David, I think, Min did Minnie get me this or you, David, the scrapbook? What? The scrapbook. Um, Minnie. Minnie bought me this. This is a massive scrapbook and so the adventure begins. We have a, um, we have a postcard um, which says, and so the adventure begins up there. David loves it and he saw this and had to buy it. Um, we don't make enough scrapbooks and things like that and keep um, photos and things like that. So we're definitely going to be using that this this year. Um, it's very nice, it's, it's this size, so it's all big squares so you can put things on. And then every so often there's a page that has like a little envelope that you can put bits in as well. So this is from Paper Chase. I just think it's really lovely and I'm looking forward to deciding what. Do we want to do that for a year or for a holiday or something? Uh, hopefully the year. The year, hopefully the year, it starts tomorrow. That's that. In a similar vein, David's sister got us a book called 365, write, 365 Journal, Write Your Tomorrow, a journal to commence at any point in the year of a new job, new semester, or new lease of life. So I'll undo this. I haven't actually it out yet. It's very pretty. Also, it's just got the, the pages are numbered. Oh, it's really nice. 
very very nice um pages are numbered and then she got us a number of things to go in there to help us decorate it so a paper book for everyday inspiration so lots of stickers and and things like this oh they're really nice like little name tags and and stuff stick oh, very very nice and then some other bits to help us with our little thing um, some adhesive dots she also got us a um polaroid camera that we can stick things in with 30 um, films in there so we'll have to start doing that from tomorrow uh, colouring pencils some sticky tape and some beautiful pens which i think are in my backpack over there and i won't make david get those through um so also i got a, another beautiful notepad this is gorgeous i love gold things anyway it says the fine print and it zips up and it is this gorgeous notebook in here so i'll be writing lots of ideas for booktube videos in there and then david got me um three little notebooks which were in my stocking. These are adorable. So they're all Harry Potter themed. Um, this one is The Book of Magical Thinking and they're little tiny notebooks with thin lines, which I love thin lines. Um, they're very, very nice. They're from the Literary Emporium where I, I featured a few of their gifts in my, um, in my bookish gift guide. The Book of Magical Thinking, The Book of Advanced Spells, The Book of Potions. So they're really, really cute little books. Um, in Along the Harry Potter vein as well, I also got a mug which says on one side, Got the Hogwarts crest and on the other side it says don't let the muggles get you down now that is a good size mug isn't it that is going to hold a lot of tea in there for me to enjoy I might take that to work with me to stop me having to get up from my desk to make so many cups of tea sounds like a good idea that's from my friend Alex and Kate I also got from Alex and Kate this is a book I didn't mention earlier um I've got a old edition of uh, Frenchman's Greek by Daphne de Maurier now when I saw this I couldn't believe how thin it was because the edition I've got feels like a normal sort of paperback but this just feels very very thin um I adored Frenchman's Creek and um read it earlier this year and will definitely be rereading it again and would love to reread it reading this feeling like I'm in a bloody Austin novel or something um last three bits David also got me in my stocking um these very cute little pencils one says I bloody love a good list hooray for lists oh I love a good list and I will be writing lists with these because I love them so much um, he also got me a letter writing set, which has beans on. Um, this is very, very cute. It's all brown paper here and then stickers and then the envelopes are very cute. Also, they've got um, little flaps on that have this print on. Oh no, that's the inside, sorry. That's the inside of the letters. That's very, very cute. Um, and that's lovely. And Two more things, actually. This, I don't know if this counts as bookish, but David bought me this beautiful little footstool, which I absolutely adore. I've got to take the tag off. It's from Tiger, was it, David? Yeah. And I've been admiring it in there for a while and I can pop it there pop my little feet on it like this and it's just lovely it's crocheted it's gorgeous i really really love it but now for the big news david i woke up on christmas morning went downstairs all of that stuff david had located this envelope throughout me throughout the throughout the bedroom trying to get me to notice it it reads thusly dear miss lauren we are pleased to inform you that you have been selected to watch harry potter and the cursed child parts one and two Please take a day's holiday in order to attend. Harry, Hermione and Ron all look forward to seeing you. Well, I cried. And, more news. We're sitting on the front row, aren't we, David? We are. Front row, and what's it? We might get wet. And you may get wet. You may get wet. I'll be getting wet because I'll be crying so much. <laughs> <laughs> I am so pumped for it. I cannot wait. I, actually, I still can't believe it's actually happening. Like you, You've told me we're going. I, I can't quite believe it. I just feel like, yeah, may maybe we're going, maybe. But I'm amazed and wondered, uh, wondered blah, 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 spellbound. Spellbound is what I am. So those are the items that I got for Christmas 2016, my bookish items. Um, I'm going to pop my feet on that stool now. Um, let me, oh, God, it's so nice to be just a little bit elevated. Um, let me know what you guys got for Christmas. I would love to hear. Um, and let me know if you've read any of these books or used any of the cookbooks. I'd be very, very interested in hearing what you have been um, cooking from them and I will see you all again maybe again today for another booktube video if I get me if I pull my finger out um, bye